Are you looking to become a YouTuber for a hobby or career? Then check out the Logitech HD Pro Webcam C920, complete with 1080p recording for your desktop or laptop. Affiliate link below in the video description. Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is 3 Buck Theater and <laughs> I've been wanting to do a video about this for a while. I kind of talk, talk about it every time I do a RT recap video, which is where I go through like the top uh, five fresh and rotten reviews on a Rotten Tomato page and kind of like dissect it a little bit, disseminate it. Uh, I always like to say that Rotten Tomatoes is not the be all end all of a film's worth, right? Evaluating a film's worth. But a lot of people out there put a very, very, very solid emphasis on that particular score and whether or not it actually leads to a movie being successful. And as a result, over the course of the holiday weekend, which was the lowest it had been since 1999 in terms of box office revenue, uh, a lot of people kind of turned their attention to film critics, those like on the on the you know filmmaker side of things, and blamed Rotten Tomatoes and film critics for the films not performing well. Uh, the Rock came out in response to some of the comments about Baywatch and said, the fans love it, the critics hate it. You know, and then also, uh, I think another producer for Disney made a very similar comment about Pirates of the Caribbean not pulling in 90 million, but 77 million and, and everything else in between. Now, the great thing about this is, is there's a whole bunch of op-ed pieces on these film blogs about from film critics that are forced to defend themselves. And I love it. I fucking love it. I relish. I lavish it. And the reason why is because I just like to point this out. As much as I love talking about movies, as much as I love discussing and disseminating the, the film industry and the culture surrounding it, I know that film critics ultimately have very little impact. And part of this, in my opinion, and they might disagree, is the fact that they are so absolutely fucking negative when it comes to movie coverage, that that negativity permeates itself through the, the film industry, the people who love watching movies and shit, and they just kind of don't care anymore. And I did touch upon this a little bit yesterday with the video about the uh, Memorial Day weekend box office being the lowest it had been in 20 years. And uh, but this is more of kind of a long form of thought on that. You've got most of your movie coverage outside of maybe some Marvel stuff is is predominantly negative what's wrong with this how this is horrible how this is shit wrong casting here wrong director wrong choice of music wrong editor wrong 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 look at the the youtube channel cinema sins right very popular people love cinema sins it's everything wrong with this movie in 16 minutes or less and oftentimes and they'll even admit to this they they just pick nitpicky things nothing that's technically wrong just nitpicky things and that leads to this entire idea that movies are all inherently shitty because people go out looking for the negative rather than the positive. And one of the things I like to do on this channel and when I talk about movies, I want to talk about them from a positive perspective because I love movies. I've grown up watching them. I've grown up wanting to work on them. I've grown up wanting to write them. I have written them. I've directed uh, one feature, written two features. Uh, overall, I've done viral marketing on a, on a Rennie Harlan movie that went straight to Netflix, whatever, you know, but I've been on set. I've worked on many short films, feature films, music videos, documentaries, a lot of different things. And I love the movie making process. And so when I go see a movie, when I talk about a movie, I'm not just thinking at it from just a film goer perspective. I'm trying to think of it from the perspective of the people that poured their heart and their soul and their blood and their tears and their sweat into making these products. Because movies are not made in a vacuum. Movies are not made by just going from I Dream a Genie. It doesn't work that way. But a lot of critics, they never think about that. They never care about that. They never care about the below the line perspective. They only care about the above the line perspective that they can ridicule, mock, nitpick, critique, and not even always in a good way. A lot of times what you get out of this kind of shit isn't even constructive. It's op-ed masquerading as journalism. And they wonder why people are so, I don't know, hateful towards movies. And you can see the impact that this kind of shit has when you have a good movie that's not doing well and all the movie blogs come out and they're just like, you have to go see this movie. Two cases, by the way. Dread from 2012, Pacific Rim 2013. Dread was an astonishingly good movie. Astonishingly good. One of the few movies in 3D that I have been like, I was better off as a film watcher by seeing it in 3D. Failed to connect. 
right, failed to connect for a number of reasons, one of which happened to be Lionsgate's just atrocious marketing. I used to drive down Sunset Boulevard and it would just be dread 3D. Like, you know, people aren't going to know what that is, right? Marketing was bad. But the film blogs came out the week after the movie came out and tanked and they wrote all these pieces, go see dread, go see dread, had no impact. They did the same thing with Pacific Rim a year later. No impact. They don't have a positive impact on movies. They don't. They simply don't have a positive impact. They have a negative impact. They negatively impact the industry. It's one of the reasons why Brett Ratner will come out and say Rotten Tomatoes is like the worst thing for movies. Because he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Putting so much faith and so much love and so much emphasis on that certified fresh label, that that aggregate number, that's not that's not even like fully realized in my opinion especially because if you go and you look at like just the rotten tomato scores right now of uh wonder woman you see like there's two negative reviews and the and the summarization of the negative reviews are are just like nitpicky shit and they have like one of them was like 2.5 uh out of five or something and that was a rotten score but then you go and you find the fresh scores that are 2.5 out of five so where's where's the uh where's this you know where where, where where's the equality here where, or where's the decision making here? Who's making these choices? Who's saying these things? Who's making that you know that pick? And there's problems with that. Now, when I go and I look at a, whether or not I want to see a movie, I will go read user reviews. I will go read those on multiple different forums to get an idea of what to expect. I go to Reddit and I'll look through the comments and see what people say about a movie and kind of judge a lot of that. Now, I don't know how much of that might be paid astroturfing. But I feel I get a much better view of what to expect from a film off of those comments than I do any review or any Rotten Tomatoes summary. So when film critics have to come out and defend themselves, they're defending themselves against a culture that they create. A toxic mindset within Hollywood that they create. They push forward these sorts of things by the constant negativity, the constant hit pieces, the constant attacks. And the reason why they do this is the saddest thing ever. A lot of these dudes love movies. A lot of these people absolutely love movies like I do. But they know that by talking about it in a positive fashion doesn't bring in the money. It doesn't bring in the clicks. It doesn't bring in the views. What it does, it, if they go negative, they'll see a spike. They'll see a spike in everything. Because people get mad, so they hate read or they hate watch. But if you're positive on it, if you like something... Then you're accused of being a shill for the studio by some people who are douchebags that are part of a culture you help create. Now, I'm not saying that any of these people are on payrolls for studios. I'm not saying anything like that. I don't believe that. I think that the studios know who's more influenceable than not, and they use that to their advantage. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I would be super inf easily influenceable. Like If Marvel's like, hey, Matt, do you want to come out to the Avengers set? I'd be like, yes. Whose dick do I have to suck to get there? I mean... I'll do it. The point is, the point is, I understand where I stand in all this, but I see a lot of the negative, and I don't want to cover that on this channel. I don't want to be the negative in, anymore in this kind of shit. Movies are awesome. They give us so much entertainment, and there's so much that goes into making them. And yes, there are problems with the industry. There are absolute problems with the industry uh, that need to be addressed. And the biggest one is better writing, and not as so much of reliance on Blake Snyder's beat sheet, but film bloggers movie bloggers they're so hateful and bitter and cynical now that they've put that mindset on their audience and they've affected the movie going public at least here in the united states in the negative and so instead of being positive and talking about things they want geeking out about things they want they've just kind of become douchebags and there's a reason why a lot of them aren't getting the respect that they that, that they want anymore and as a result I've become even more angry and bitter. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that a few of them come back. I don't agree with everything Collider Video has to say, all those guys over there, but they're nine times out of 10 more positive about the coverage that they talk about than almost anybody else. They're looking to talk about the love of movies, which is awesome, and not looking to shit on them because it brings them cheap clicks. And there's a lot of people out there that do that. So yeah, I think Rotten Tomatoes is a very large part of the problem 
with people uh, who want to go see movies and that rely on these numbers because the people who write the reviews that get on there are some of the most cynical, bitter people you'll ever come across. And all you have to do is check out their Twitter feed to confirm it. So if you want positive coverage, stick around here or, you know, go any place you want to go to get coverage. But just know that I'm not going to try to lie to you or try to sell you on something different because it gets views. You know, I want to talk about movies from a pure love of it, uh, from a geek out perspective. And I think that's going to be a lot of fun. So that's just what I wanted to say about that. You guys can uh, post your comments below. They should be fun. This is YouTube. No, no such thing as a good comment section. <laughs> I will talk to you guys later. Have yourself a fantastic day. Peace out.